Welcome to our lesson in science for first quarter under the domain matter. I am teacher Jonalyn D. Madhus of Sorigao City Special Science Elementary School. And I am glad that you will be with me to tackle on the materials that float and sink. For our learning competency, classify materials based on the ability to absorb water, float, sink, and undergo decay. The code is S4MT1-A-1. For the unpack competencies, we have identified the materials that will float or sink, describe and relate the kind of materials that float and sink, and group the materials that float and sink. Ready now, ready now. I'm sure that you're very excited to learn something new today. But first, let us review. Can you tell what is the most absorbent material that we have at home? I guess you have that in your mind. It's cotton. Why is it that some materials absorb more water than others? Can you recall the two classification of materials? We have the porous materials and the non-porous materials. What are porous materials? These are materials having small holes that allow air and liquid to pass through. But how about the non-porous? The non-porous materials are those materials that do not allow air and liquid to pass through. I guess these things are very clear to you already. Let me show you a picture. Can you tell what do you call this material? Why is it some people use floaters when they go swimming? Do floaters help us in swimming? You have to reserve your answers because we are going to discuss that one later on. But first, we have to perform the activities. For our first activity, activity number one, make me a float or sink. For our problem, what are the materials that will float or sink? Here are the materials. Coin. Metal spoon. Hair clip or pin. Safety pin. Key. Disposable glass. Matchstick. Plastic bottle. Marble. Plastic ball. Aquarium and the most important material that we are going to use in this activity is water. For the procedure, number one, fill the basin half full of water, put the materials one after the other, Record your observations on the table provided. I am going to show you the chart of observations later on. After dropping all the materials in the basin, observe them properly. Take note of the materials that float and sink. Group the materials that float and the materials that sink. Then you have to finalize your answers in the table provided and answer the questions that will follow. Here are the questions. Number one. What are the materials that float in the water? Two. 
What are the materials that sink in the water? 3. Do all materials have the same characteristics? 4. What kind of materials that usually float in the water? And what kind of materials that usually sink in the water? Here is our observation chart wherein you are going to record all your observations. There are 10 listed materials. In the second column, you are going to write whether it is made of metal, plastic, wood, or glass. Then on the last two columns, you are going to check whether it floats or sink. Here is our activity. Please observe the activity properly. The first material, the metal spoon. The second material is the safety pin. The third material is the disposable glass. The fourth material is the plastic ball. The fifth material is the one peso coin. The sixth material is a piece of matchstick. The next material is the hair pin. Then we have the next material, the key. Followed by the next material, the plastic bottle. It is covered with a plastic bottle cup. And the last material is marble. I guess we are done with the 10 materials. Now try to observe what are the materials that stays in the bottom of the aquarium. There are six materials stayed at the bottom of the aquarium. Then there are four materials that float on top of the water. And there are also materials that submerge on top of the water. Look at that. Please record your observations properly. You can check whether it float or it sink. I guess you are done with your observation chart. You can now start answering the questions. Let us answer the questions. Question number one. 
What are the materials that float in the water? The plastic ball. The matchstick. The plastic bottle. And the disposable glass. Do we have the same answers? I guess we have the same answers. Let's proceed to question number two. What are the materials that sink in the water? The materials that sink in the water are the following. The marble, key, safety pin, the one peso coin, the hairpin, and the metal spoon. Do we have the same answers? So let us proceed. Now let's have question number three. Do all materials have the same characteristics? No, the materials do not have the same characteristics. Some materials are made of glass, made of wood, made of metal, and made of plastics. And by just looking at the materials, their shape and colors vary. Question number four. What kind of materials that usually float in the water? What kind of materials that usually sink in the water? Materials that usually sink in the water are made of glass and metal. And four materials that usually float in the water are made of wood and plastic. Here is our observation chart. Let us check whether we have the same answers. For metal spoon, made of metal, it's sink. Safety pin, made of metal, it sink. Plastic glass or disposable glass made of plastic, it float. Plastic ball, plastic, it float. Coin, made of metal, it sink. Mud stick, made of wood, it float. Hairpin, made of metal, it sink. A key, Made of metal, it sink. Plastic bottle, made of plastic, it flow. And for the last one, we have the marble, made of glass, it sink. Did you get it right? I guess we have the same answers. Shall we proceed to the next activity? Let us group the materials together. Let us group the materials that float and the materials that will sink. The first material is the disposable glass, float. The matchstick, float. The key, sink. The hairpin, sink. The plastic ball, float. The metal spoon, sink. The marble, sink. The one peso coin, sink. The bottle, plastic bottle, float. And the safety pin, sink. What is the difference between float and sink? When we say float, it means to stay on top or to stay submerged on the water. And for sink, it means to fall to the bottom of the water. Is things clear to you? 
Let us remember these concepts. An object shape can affect its ability to float, but some materials float no matter what their shape is, like the mud stick and the hairpin. Some things float at first, but then sink as they absorb water or take water through holes like a paper. If you are going to drop a piece of paper on top of the water, it will float first, but later on, it will sink. Some things sink very fast and some things sink very slow, like the piece of metal spoon and a one peso coin. Which one sink very fast? It is the spoon. Let us go back to the first picture that I am showing you from the very start. Can you tell what do you call this material? Why is it that some people use floaters when they go swimming? And do floaters help us in swimming? This is a floater. Usually, this material is used by the lifeguards or the rescue words. Sometimes we call it Salvavida in our dialect. We use improvised salvavida or floaters by having uh, used interior of wheels. Then we are going to inflate that one with air so we can use it already in our swimming activity. Does it help us? Yes, because sometimes we find it hard to go swimming or we would like to enjoy swimming so we are going to use floaters and so that we will not sink if we get tired while swimming we can use that floater talking about swimming activity this man really enjoyed floating in the sea because the sea is very clear but how about if on the other side, the other way around. Why is it that we should not throw our trash in the river? What's the connection? We should not throw our trash in the river because all kinds of our trash will go to the open sea. Some trash will float and others will sink. It will kill the living organisms. It will pollute our ocean floor and destroy the beauty of our nature. Which ocean would you like to swim? This one or this one? It's a choice. You have to choose which one you'd like to swim. And before we are going to end up our lesson for today, let us check whether you understand very well our topic. For the evaluation, you are going to write float or sink on the answer sheet provided for you. Number one, plastic gloves. Number two, flower vase made of glass. Number three, shades. Number four, plastic bottles. Number five, wheels. Number six, twigs. Number seven, iron rod. Number eight, hollow block. Number nine, coins. Number ten, corrugated roofing. Are you done answering our evaluation? Let us try to check our answers. Number one, flu. Number two, sink. Number three, sink. Number four, Float. Number five, sink. 
number seven, number six, float, number seven, sink, number eight, sink, number nine, sink, and number ten, the last number, sink. Do you get all ten correct answers? Congratulations! Congratulations! We are going to try this at home. Go to your kitchen, get five materials and test whether they float or sink. But be sure you are not going to play with materials, especially if you are going to use materials which are pointed and sharp. Be careful not to play with those materials. Then you have to record all your answers in the chart provided for you. Let me invite you to recite with me the following statement. Are you ready? I can identify the materials that will float or sink. I can describe and relate the kind of materials that float and sink. I can group the materials that float and sink. Thank you and God bless us always from your teacher for today, Teacher Jonaline. God bless everyone.